Here, I'll show you how to exclude cells that are filtered, hidden, or grouped from formulas and calculations in Excel. It's a pretty cool little feature. I'll show you a couple different ways to do it. So here we have grouped data. Notice that when I hide it, some of the values up here change and some do not. So this will allow you to more accurately represent the data that you see in Excel, and it's a pretty cool little trick. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right. So in order to achieve this, what we're going to do is to use one of two functions, the subtotal function or the aggregate function. And they're almost exactly the same. The subtotal one is the older function that works in previous versions of Excel. The aggregate function is the newer, more powerful one that works from versions 2010 and up. So we'll cover all that here, don't worry. Now, to show you how this works, let's get started with some sample data. Let's say that I have a little tiny data table here, and I just want to count how many rows there are in it. So let's go with the first way, regular count formula. OK, select the data, easy peasy, 5. Now, if I go to filter the data, the problem is that it's not going to accurately represent the data that we see. So it still says 5, even though I only see 2. Here comes the subtotal function. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So the subtotal function is really awesome. Equals subtotal returns a subtotal in a list or database, but that's not really helpful. What it does is it allows you to exclude hidden rows, basically hidden cells. So the first argument for this is what's called the function number. And you can see here we have a list of options. So average count, count a, max min, these are regular Excel functions. So it's basically saying, hey, tell me what you want me to do. Do you want me to average it, to count it, to get the max, to get the min, and so on? What do you want me to do? And here you have a few different options, 11 different options to be exact. The aggregate function, which we'll cover in a moment, has more. And this is where it gets a little tricky, and I'll cover it in subtotal 2. But you then have these functions repeating themselves down here, but with 100 in front of it, so 101, 102, 103. A little interesting distinction I'll cover in a moment. But we want to do count, so we select 2, or just type 2 right there, comma. And now you have these reference arguments. The reference arguments just allow you to put in the required arguments for the function that it's supposed to run. So it's supposed to run the count function. All I need to do is select a range for the count function. So that's it. So I'm done. Now if I go to filter the data once more, select two rows, you can see we get the correct result for the visible data set, two. So easy peasy using the subtotal function. It's going to work in older versions of Excel, not just 2010 and later. And if you don't remember the function number, there's no point in copying it down. Just delete this, start typing a number, and you're going to see the list right here. Now let's hit Escape. OK. Now let us back up to Filter. And let's go to the second subtotal. Now this is going to be almost the same as the other one, except for doing count at number two, we're going to do count at 102. What that means is that it will also not include manually hidden rows. Otherwise, it works exactly the same. Now, we'll cover that on the next tab, but I'm going to go ahead and pop it in here just so you can see that if we do use it here, it will still give an accurate result. So then once we go and do the filter, you'll see that there are no problems with that. So it's basically just a more power, powerful version of the subtotal, and you'll see how that comes in handy momentarily. Now let's do the aggregate function. If you are in the a later version of Excel, 2010 and later, pretty much all of you probably are, use this function. It is awesome. So it's basically just a slightly more powerful version of the subtotal function. Equals aggregate. And now here for the function num argument, same as the subtotal argument, we have, instead of 11 options, 19 different options. And you'll notice that there are no 101, 102, 103, there are no 100 options. So that has been removed and placed into the third or the second argument for this function. So here, very simple, 
mm. not as confusing as the subtotal, especially if you leave it and don't touch this function for months and then come back to it and wonder why it's 102 instead of 2. You don't have to worry about that with the aggregate function. You can only select one number per function. So a lot more logical here. So we want count. Now we go to the second argument. And this is what makes this so much more powerful, is because instead of doing 2 for count or 102 for the count that doesn't include hidden rows, we get to tell it right here, what should you include in the function calculations? Well, 0, ignore nested subtotal and aggregate functions. That's what the subtotal and aggregate function do by default. They, if they see, if they encounter any other of their own functions, they ignore them. Then we have ignore hidden rows, nested subtotal and aggregate functions. Ignore error values, nested subtotal and aggregate functions. This is where this one really stands out because if there are any errors in your, in the numbers, which you'll see in a moment, it causes problems for the other functions. And then here is the default one that I'm going to say you should use in almost every scenario. Ignore hidden rows, error values, and the nested subtotal and aggregate functions. So we're going to go ahead and go to 3 right now, then comma. And now you fill in the arguments for your functions. So you see down here you have a few different things. But really all that's saying is it's providing you different options for the functions that you may want aggregate to carry out. So here it's count, very simple. We just select the rows and we hit enter. And everything will work just the same. So once we go ahead and filter the data, everything will be happy, life will be good. Now that's really all there is to the subtotal and aggregate functions. So if you want to stop watching now, go for it. But what I'm going to cover in the next few tabs are just different scenarios so I can show you where the aggregate really shows its power, not just in additional functions, but also in avoiding errors, and then how it works with hiding and grouping data. So let's go to the next worksheet now, and let's talk about hiding data. So in the previous example, all I did was filter data, and that was easy peasy. So here I'm going to very quickly fill in the exact same formula. So subtotal, we're going to do a count. And we're going to do that. And then the next subtotal, account 102 this time. What an annoying way for them to have you input different versions of calculating a formula, I guess. And aggregate, easy peasy, 2. And I want to leave it at 3, so I can ignore hidden rows and error values and nested subtotal and aggregate functions. OK. So now, 5555. Five, five, five. Let's go ahead this time, and instead of filtering it, just right-click the row and go to Hide. Notice these two still say 5. Even the subtotal still says 5. It's only when we have the 100 versions of the functions or the aggregate function that it gets, gives us the accurate count of the visible rows. So yes, when you filter your data, Excel automatically hides the data for you. But here we are manually hiding the data. So basically the same thing is happening. We're just doing it a different way. And so the subtotal calculations will appear different when you do that. And you just need to pay attention. Because even though I'm telling you to use aggregate now, many of your worksheets and workbooks, especially older ones, will be using the subtotal function. And you need to know that it will calculate things different if you use the 1 through 11 for the functions, or the 101 through 111. So the 100 numbers are the more robust versions of them because it will not count hidden rows. And let's be honest, if you don't want to count the rows that are hidden by a filter, you probably also don't want to count the ones that are hidden manually. And of course, the aggregate function just makes it so much easier to know what it's counting. Just delete the second number, type any number, and it's going to pop up that list so you can see exactly what you want to do. And I didn't cover 4, 5, 6, and 7. They're just different things that you can do. Ignore nothing, hidden rows, error values, or hidden rows and error values. So it's pretty self-explanatory. And note that aggregate doesn't always ignore the rows. So if one of your colleagues uses the aggregate function and you're thinking, oh, great, it's aggregate. It's not going to count any of my hidden rows. But then they input 4 or ignore nothing, you're going to get 5 here. 
So aggregate is better because it's more powerful, not because it always ignores everything that is hidden. But we're going to leave it at three, which is what you should probably use. And everything is happy. Now, let us go over here. Slightly different example, pretty much same premise. We have a set of numbers. They are all the same for each one of these columns. And now what we're going to do is we are just going to sum everything. So subtotal sum is 9 right there. Oops, yes, too few arguments. OK, thank you. So 9. Then we select OK. And subtotal, we shall do 109. So it's the same, just with 100 in front of it. So 9 for the regular sum, 109 for the sum that ignores the hidden values. OK. And aggregate, 9, 3, up here. So once you use it a few times, you're going to memorize the numbers that apply to the functions. So you will not have to scroll up and down the list each time. And it's very quick and easy to input these functions. So now let us go ahead and throw an error. Actually, a pretty cool function for that now equals error type. I'm certain it is not available in older versions of Excel. If you want to throw an error manually, just do equals 1 divided by 0, by the way. And that'll throw a lovely error in there. Now look. These three dudes, even this one here, subtotal 2, which seemed so nice for the other examples, it has now failed us. So aggregate is our savior. And trust me, it is so helpful to not have your entire spreadsheet blow up just because of a cell with a stupid error in it. Oftentimes it comes when you import data. So it's not always under your control. So aggregate, all we had to do here, nothing funny with a function number, just go to the options argument and make sure that you choose one of these options that ignores error values. That's it. And also, if we hid a row, it would work just as well. So I'm going to go ahead and unhide that row, but leave in the error. Now let's do one last thing, the group. So this is where I started off the tutorial for the intro. We've got a sum here, just a regular sum for column C, subtotal with a sum 9. And then we have a sum here for the 100s. And then we have an aggregate 9, 3, column C. So you can see that when we go here to hide the data using grouping, these two update accordingly. So grouping, even though it is, I wouldn't really call it necessarily manually hiding, it's not like right clicking the rows and clicking hide and then unhide, it just, it doesn't act like filtering. It acts like manually hiding. So our example from this tab right here. Now, what is grouping? Okay, so if you don't know what grouping is, it's this really, really cool feature that allows you to group data and then hide it so that you don't need to see it, basically. So if I don't need to see Q1 and Q2, I just want to see Q3 and Q4, well, I can leave these sections unhidden and hide these right here. And to hide data, it's very easy. Just select the rows that you would like to hide or the columns, go to the Data tab, and then go over here to Group. And this little doodle will appear. And now I can group that. So that's how you group it. And if you want to ungroup it, just select everything. So there, ungroup. And now everybody's happy. So I'm going to back that up so we have the grouping. One and two up here is really cool, by the way. It's how you can collapse and expand everything all at once. And you can see the formulas changing up here when we do that. So sorry, this is not a grouping tutorial. But the point is that even for grouping, you're going to need to either use the subtotal in the 100s or use the aggregate function where it's going to ignore hidden values. So basically, just use the aggregate function with a 3 for the options argument. And for the most part, everyone will be happy. Life 
will be good. And that's all there is to it, to excluding cells that have been filtered, hidden, or grouped from your formulas and functions in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.